Creatine seems like an amazing supplement for so many things, and it's widely touted for its ability to improve muscle growth. But the question remains is, does creatine have any positive impact on serum testosterone levels? I'm Dr. Rina Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're gonna to be covering creatine and its impact on testosterone. So let's get started. What is creatine? So creatine is a naturally occurring compound that's found in muscle cells and it's typically synthesized in the liver, kidneys, and pancreas from amino acids. And it's typically stored in muscles in the form of phosphocreatine. And what it does is it helps recycle ATP, which is the primary energy source for muscular contractions. Supplementing creatine is known to increase a couple things. One, it increases intramuscular phosphocreatine as well as free creatine stores. And this increase is seen in skeletal muscle by about 20% and even in the brain by somewhere between 5 to 10%. Now taken together, this can improve muscle energy production and support muscular growth and hypertrophy, which then leads to improved strength, power, and performance. There's also studies that suggest it may even improve brain health because of the increased phosphocreatine in the brain. So they've actually looked at things like cognition and recovery from injuries to the brain. However, in terms of looking at hormonal responses to creatine supplementation, most of the studies have been done on young, healthy men who are active athletes or training. Now, there was 13 studies done looking at the impact of creatine on hormones, specifically testosterone. Now, out of those 13, three of them found a positive correlation between creatine supplementation and testosterone. And these include a total of 60 men. One of them looked at 20 college-aged rugby players from South Africa, and they were randomized to get a placebo or creatine, and they got a loading phase of 25 grams grams per day for one week, followed by a maintenance dose of five grams per day for two weeks. Now, this particular study didn't actually see a change in testosterone, but it did see an improvement in dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, by 12 nanograms per deciliter. The other two studies evaluated amateur swimmers in Iran and active males. And they, in these studies, got 20 grams daily of creatine for six days or one week. And in both of those studies, they did see an increase in testosterone of 57 nanograms per deciliter in the one study and 150 nanograms per deciliter in the other study. However, remember, there was 13 studies, so 10 of the other trials, looking at 218 men, saw no impact on testosterone levels when getting creatine. Now, these studies had anywhere between 11 and 33 men per study and followed them from anywhere from eight days to as long as 12 weeks. Now, the dosing was variable. Some of them got three grams a day. Some of them got 25 grams a day. I'm generally not persuaded that creatine alone is having an impact on testosterone levels. However, I do think that creatine supplementation is beneficial for athletes and individuals engaging in high intensity exercise for the benefits of performance, muscle growth, and potentially even supporting brain health. In terms of side effects, creatine is very generally safe. It's pretty well tolerated. Now, some people have some nausea or abdominal cramping, diarrhea or bloating, um, and it usually does cause some increased water retention, which can then translate to an increase in weight, at least initially when you start taking it. And lastly, if you have kidney disease, there is a potential concern that's not really been very substantiated that it can have an effect on people who have some baseline impaired kidney function. And generally, if you have liver disease, you're pregnant or breastfeeding, or you're taking any medications that may affect the kidneys, you may want to be cautious about taking creatine in these cases because it hasn't been studied in these groups. Now, while creatine didn't show much of a difference, there's actually been some studies looking at creatine with beta alanine and creatine with beta hydroxy beta methylbutyrate, also known as HMB. Let's start with beta alanine. Beta alanine is a non-essential amino acid that's naturally produced in the liver, and it can be obtained in the diet, primarily through animal-based foods like beef, chicken, and other organs. 
Now, generally, beta alanine is a precursor for carnosine, which helps maintain the acid base balance in muscle synthesis and specifically in skeletal muscles, the brain, and the heart. Now, during exercise, the carnosine that your body produces protects against acid buildup during these high intensity exercises and it helps keep your muscles from fatiguing too quickly. So the thought is that it may lead to improved performance specifically in high intensity activities like maybe sprinting or swimming, which may be short bursts, like anywhere lasting from one to 10 minutes. So by itself, beta alanine, again, hasn't shown any significant changes in serum testosterone levels. However, there's been two studies that have evaluated creatine and beta alanine together and they had sort of mixed results. One study looked at 20 military personnel. They got four weeks of supplementation with 6.4 grams of beta alanine, and then they got one week of creatine loading of 0.3 grams per kilogram per day, which would be about 21 grams for an average 70 kilogram adult. And in this study, they did see a significant increase in testosterone from 5.3 for six nanograms per liter to 5.92 nanograms per liter. And the authors themselves say that this small increase in testosterone may only play a minor role in muscle adaptations and is generally controversial. Now the next study recruited 33 male collegiate football players and they got 10.5 grams of creatine and or creatine alone daily or a placebo. And they also followed a 10 week resistance training program at the same time. And essentially here, they found that there was no significant difference in the creatine and beta alanine group compared to placebo. However, in this study, interestingly, the creatine only group did see an increase in total serum testosterone. So generally speaking, beta alanine doesn't seem to have any hormonal effects in terms of increasing testosterone with or without creatine. However, there are some risks associated with beta alanine supplementation. And one of the common side effects is actually paresthesia or a tingling sensation on the skin. And this is generally avoided by taking smaller doses. So the larger doses you take, you're more likely to have this side effect or taking more extended release formulations. Now, lastly, HMB. Now, HMB is a metabolite of the essential amino acid leucine, which you may have heard of as being very important for muscular growth. HMB is naturally produced in the body when leucine breaks down, and it's known for what we call anti-catabolic properties, meaning it helps prevent muscle breakdown. It also enhances the buildup of protein and reduces muscle damage. Subsequently, it can then enhance recovery and because of the enhanced recovery, improve exercise performance. In 2020, they looked at the effects of creatine monohydrate and HMB supplementation in a double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trial where they recruited 28 male elite rowers. They divided these rowers up into four groups. So the first group got creatine only at about 0.04 grams per kilogram per day. Group two got three grams of HMB per day. And group three got creatine and HMB and group four got placebo. And so what they saw was that there was a significant increase in testosterone in the group that got creatine and HMB, which was from 4.91 nanograms per deciliter to 5.97 nanograms per deciliter. However, again, this trial was really, really small because there's only about seven guys in each group and it was not pre-registered, meaning they didn't really have a clear primary outcome. So it wasn't designed perfectly to assess this outcome. Now there's another study looking at 28 elite male rugby players. Again, got either a placebo, HMB three grams per day or HMB three grams with creatine daily. And they, again, in this study found no significant difference in serum testosterone levels. Ultimately, what I think is that HMB doesn't really have any true benefits in terms of increasing testosterone. At least at this point, the data is not convincing and not rigorous. I do think HMB may be beneficial in older populations to prevent muscle breakdown, but not quite significant enough where I would recommend it widely. 
Bottom line, I don't think that taking creatine supplementation causes any hormonal changes in terms of sex hormones. However, creatine monohydrate is one of the most widely studied supplements and it has significant benefits in terms of increasing muscular strength, recovery, and potentially some increase in muscular size. So I think if you're taking it for those purposes, it is probably beneficial. Now, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to check out my other videos on testosterone boosters and check out my free ebook, Better Sex, Better Life, which covers my top 10 tips to have the best sex of your life. And as always, we're gonna take care of yourself because you're worth it.